name is Sahu Patel and I'm a sophomore at Washington Hills Regional High School and in this video I'm going to be talking about Horace Mann's report to the Board of Education of Massachusetts in 1840. Education gives individuals the ability to succeed in developed societies and has been an integral part of all societies since the beginning of time. However, the United States of America didn't incorporate mandatory education into the country until the 1840s. And Horace Mann was one of the biggest proponents of, an edu of a public education system and gave every citizen the opportunity to learn. And he was eventually able to make this policy come true. In 1840, Mann reported to the Massachusetts Board of Education and he stressed the importance of an educated public and provided examples on how it could be done. The mid-1800s in America brought on a plethora of social, economic, and pl political changes which needed to be supported by education. Horace Mann was also a big advocate of a public education system because he wanted a more socially equal society. He wanted slavery to be abolished, and he also wanted the government to diversify from the small little elite that it consisted of. After the Revolutionary War, many of the Founding Fathers saw that education was the key to a prosperous nation. And some of them, such as Thomas Jefferson, made constant attempts to get more funding and more focus directed towards public education. However, the movement didn't really take off until the 1840s with Horace Mann at the front. Education would eventually, though, become a staple of American society, and in 20 years, public schools were common throughout the whole entire country. Horace Mann's life began in poverty. He was born to poor parents in Massachusetts, and he was never part of that small, educated elite that governed the whole entire country. He didn't have parents who were accomplished and involved in politics, such as John Quincy Adams, and he was never given a formal education by, the, by a tutor. He had maybe from anywhere f f from 10 to six weeks, six to 10 weeks of schooling a year. And he really just educated himself mainly. He grew up in Massachusetts where he was surrounded by politicians. And this drove him to want an education. He wanted to be equal to these men. So he read a lot. Growing up this way, he just read tons of books, whatever he could get his hands on. And he recognized the importance of education. Man also saw that education was necessary so citizens knew what was going on in their country and they knew what they were actually voting about and from his own experiences growing up he knew that getting a diff uh, getting a quality education was not an easy thing he had the personal drive to go learn more and more but not every american had that drive but they still needed it a basic education at least for the country to grow as a whole so this led horace man to camp to lead a massive campaign for public libraries around the whole entire country so people would always have material to read and always be learning more. He also wanted public schools around the country, but he knew these would be more difficult to fund. In Horace Mann's report to the Massachusetts Board of Education in 1840, he clearly expressed his views on education. He began by stating that few men have battles to fight or senates to persuade or kingdoms to rule, but all have a spirit to be controlled and to be brought into subject to the social and divine law. The intellect forces the great problems of existence and futurity and destiny upon all, and none will question that much depends upon human means, whether a man shall go through the world and out of it, elated by delusive hopes or tormented by causeless fear. When man says this, he is reflecting on the state of America as a whole during this time period. He's trying to convey the idea that governments are very small but play a big part in citizens' lives. The government made decisions that had profound impacts on the lives of Americans. This can clearly be shown with the protective tariffs implemented in the 1820s. It limited the amount of, that Americans could spend on foreign products and forced them to purchase American manufactured goods. This is exactly what man saw, and he wanted the citizens to have more control over what they can buy and their personal rights. He's also trying to say that the intellect of humans force them to think about their existence and what they actually need in life. It makes them question whether or not they actually need the government to survive. Along with this, he mentions that being educated helps people see the real world. Instead of being sheltered from the negative aspects of life or being too scared to take certain risks, people will see through these and adapt to life with them, making the overall experience more enjoyable. However, most Americans at this time did not receive formal educations. They may have been literate, but they did not know enough about abstract political ideas 
to understand policies that were implemented by the government. Instead, they voted on issues blindly, and could have been pushed towards one side just because it was talked about in a positive light by a proponent of the idea. Majority of Americans at this time cared about basic issues, such as taxes, which directly affected the amount of money they were able to keep in their pockets. He also referred to the Second Great Awakening, which was a religious revival that made people question their religious beliefs and in some cases convert. They were somewhat educated on the matter, which forced their intellect to question everything they believed about one certain sect of religion and possibly convert. Similar to this, integrating public schools into American society would help push the country forward. The children of any time period are the future of the world, and if the kids were not educated, the same cycle of uneducated people voting would keep repeating. Schools would help balance the social scale of the country. Children would learn fundamental values such as standard political instruction, respect for property, and other values that would keep the country from falling apart. The children would then be able to see how important knowing about the government was to their lives and know exactly what they were voting about when the time came. Aside from the political advantages of having an education, it would also help them in their own lives. They would learn about the world around them and be able to take the risks and solve problems in life, rather than avoid them and continue old traditions that their fathers taught them. Ultimately, man wanted the future children of America to be educated so they could further improve their own lives and the country as a whole. As seen with the Liberty, Republican, and Compromise generations in America, what occurs during the formative years of a child's life has a profound impact on their behavior as adults and the overall decisions they make in life. Mann showed how important education was in the formative years with the following. He identifies that libraries dramatically increase intelligence in all towns, but they do not increase intelligence amongst adults. It works best with young children. Once the kids spike an in interest in reading and getting educated, they will not stop. He says it's an acquired taste, but students would get addicted to it. If they were able to make it, it work in one city and broadcast it to the entire nation, more libraries would pop up around the country. This would lead to more demand for quality educations and more funding of public schools to meet the demand. These children would be shaped by this education, similar to how the compromised generation was molded by the Revolutionary War in the critical period. They would learn on a higher level, and being in Massachusetts, most likely learn to oppose slavery. A generation of intelligent, well-read abolitionists would be formed from this, which would have a serious impact on the nation. These children would learn to oppose slavery, and when they grow up, they would be the same. This outright opposition to slavery by the masses would make the already present division between the North and the South even stronger and lead to violence. The Civil War eventually broke out due to the rising tensions, and this led to the Emancipation Proclamation in 1863, which freed slaves. Mann saw what an extensive impact education could have on big issues such as slavery and constantly advocated for more public education throughout the 1830s and 40s. Horace Mann also believed that the government was too exclusive. He directly expressed these views with the following quote. Again, it is believed that no barbarous nation has ever been known to history amongst whom any form of government has been established, which has not adopted specific measures to educate the heir of sovereignty for the discharge of his regal duties and the obligation to prepare for the responsibilities attendant upon power, be less where all citizens instead of one are born to the inheritance of sovereignty. By our institutions, the political rights of the father descend to his sons. In, co in the course of law, but the intellectual and moral co qualifications necessary for discrete use of those rights and are intransmissible by virtue of any statute. These are personal, not hereditary, and therefore to be taught anew and learned anew by each successive generation. Hence, as a work of education is never done, the means of education to never be withheld, as the former must be continually renewed, the latter must as continually be supplied. He clearly stated that when every civilization in history is examined, it can clearly be seen that they had all instituted measures for an education system which would help educate the future leaders of the country. Each government that did not adopt such measures had eventually collapsed. During the time when this document was written, the government had always been controlled by a small group of wealthy individuals, considered the elite. Most of these men were educated at private schools or with private tutors, and they never really saw education as a problem. However, the few involved in government that were self-educated, such as Alexander Hamilton and Horace Mann, realized that education was the real key to a prosperous country. Mann being being born into poverty and educating himself was not in support of this system. He believed that every generation should be educated on the same matters as their fathers and they should learn the same skills needed to run the country. He was trying to divert he was trying to diversify the population in the government. If people from southern plantations and western land speculators became part of the government, the actual citizens of the country would be fairly represented. 
and it would create a more prosperous country as a whole. With this, he was also saying that the country would progress more. Up to this point in time, the country had gone through fairly similar cycles of ruling, and they had all consisted of the elite making decisions that they believed were best for the nation, never really taking into account the needs of the majority of the population. Giving free education to the masses could have also been detrimental to the country. Mann tells the Board of Education that, yet not for its own sake only should it assume this work. It is a corollary that from the axioms of its constitution that every child born within its borders shall be enlightened. In its paternal character, the government is bound even to those who can make no requital. Sacredly, it is bound to develop all the existing capacities and to ensure the utmost attainable welfare of that vast crowd can throng of men who without being known during life beyond their neighboring hills, without leaving an enduring name behind them after de death, still by their lifelong industry, fill up as as it were drop by drop the mighty stream of the country's prosperity in the heart of this multitude dwell capacities of good and possibilities of evil wholly transcending the power of fin finite imagination to conceive when man writes these words he means to say that the government should spend it, spread education throughout the country he says that if all citizens of the country get educated they can ensure the utmost attainable welfare for themselves and the country they would be able to spread the welfare throughout the country and the world, leaving a lasting legacy on earth. He is trying to convince the board to fund more public schools, and he does this by telling them that their actions will make the world an overall better place. However, education for the masses could have been extremely harmful to the country. If every single man during the 1800s became educated, they would all believe they were right on every matter. This would create more competition in politics and more political parties to form. Power in the country would be divided and nothing would ever get done due to the contradicting views of the citizens. When the people are less educated, it is easier to convince them to choose a side and vote in favor or against it. However, giving education to everyone could have led to increased confidence in young adults which would have led to new political ideas that could have been harmful to the country. This was shown with the secession of South Carolina in 1860. In 1860, the state of South Carolina seceded from the Union. The leaders in the, of the state and the individuals who were in favor of secession were educated by public schools. They grew up learning that they could do what they wanted and that we had a free choice. This is what gave them the confidence to follow through with their actions. The public school system. The country was torn apart into two because of the confidence given to them, given to the children from the public school system. Evidently, the idea of free public schools throughout the nation did have some flaws. Horace Mann reported to the Board of Education in 1840. In this report, he constantly talked about how education is extremely important to the growth of the country and repeatedly stresses the importance of libraries and sparking children's interests in reading and learning. Public education in the country would help diversify the government, assist in creating a generation of abolitionists that would change the country forever and make society more socially equal. With these changes, there were flaws like anything, but they ultimately were not outweighed by the pros it would bring to the country. Overall, Horace Mann's report to the Board of Education was a very significant document that had a profound impact on the way people viewed education during this time period.